All right, guys. The final unit of the air and water unit, and what we're going to talk to about today is about the air that we breathe, and also I'm going to just start, start a whole bunch of carbon cycle in, in it as well. So it's important to love the air that you breathe, especially for us folks here in the city. And we've talked about what clean air is all about. It is 78% nitrogen and 78% nitrogen and about 21% oxygen with about 1% of miscellaneous gases. Now, humans take this air and we remove all the other airs, some of it, like argon, we uh, collect it, package it, and liquefy it, and then store it. But what is, remains would be nitrogen and oxygen. Now, these two molecules, molecular compounds, will then be liquefied in minus 200 degrees, and then it will be put into a fractional distillation chamber where you'll be warmed up, theoretically, um, because it's just naturally, to negative 190 degrees first, where nitrogen is removed as a gas, which is then again liquefied and stored so that it can be shipped to be used in places like um, canning, food canning business factories where you want to displace the air in the canned food so you have nitrogen inside and so that the food will remain uh, fresh because of the, no oxidation will take place. And uh, the bottom chamber, the bottom chamber, oxygen gas is oxygen, liquid oxygen is collected at negative 185 degrees and then it's packaged it again as well and sold to like hospitals, uh, labs, uh, maybe um, let's say uh, for you and I when we want to go diving or mountain climbing. So that's about it for air and now I'm going to talk about the carbon cycle. Now I'm going to start talking about organisms like plants and, and mammals and animals or whatever and plankton. When they die off they get buried on top of, of by layers and layers and layers of seabed or uh, ground, and they get buried. And after many, 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 many years, the intense pressure will cause them to form into coal, oil, or gas deposits. Now, oil and gas are usually found together, uh, while coal deposits are separate. Now, coal is not. To be confused with charcoal that you use to barbecue um, on a Sunday afternoon. Okay, charcoal is totally different than coal. Coal is like whoa, smelly. Okay, <clears throat> so oil and gas, the process of oil and gas is usually found um, where the bottom layer is oil and the top layer is gas. All right, natural gas made of methane and mostly methane and other smaller gases like ethane, you know, or butane, or propane, stuff like that. So humans come in, people come in, play a role by extracting these deposits and we feed them to the city, all right? Uh, especially to power plants, where power plants, uh, coal and oil is, are used to power up the generators to produce electricity that will feed to the entire grid. So let's continue with that. So uh, the main product of all these um, exploitation is uh, carbon dioxide, which will be converted back, it will be absorbed by photosynthesis of plants, and maybe by also by uh, marine organisms. Uh, and respiration is where animals and plants will release carbon dioxide. Methane as well for farm, for, uh, for uh, caused by uh, farms and cows belching and burping after having a bountiful feast of grass. Anyway, so that's basically the clean carbon cycle. Now, uh, with all these part 
particulates or the gases that's emitted by human activity, um, we know that CO2 is the main product of combustion, but um, a byproduct, a non water product, product is nitrogen and sulfur, nitrogen oxides and sulfur dioxides. And the reason is that you can find nitrogen and sulfur and carbon and hydrogen really not much of a hydrogen, but some of it, in the, uh, in all living organisms in the form of DNA. So it's like pack, 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 all of these protein amino acids in DNA, uh, and then they become condensed, and they become deposits, and then suddenly we're releasing it out to the environment for the very first time after many, 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 many years. Right? But the, uh, what I'm going to talk about is the nitrogen oxides, uh, nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide. Uh, usually it will just linger around the city and maybe gets blown off by the wind. But in cities such as Los Angeles, uh, Mexico City, uh, maybe Kuala Lumpur, I, I can see it kind of bit. And uh, where the city is between um, Area where it's prone, air is prone to be trapped because that, there's a mountain at the back, and maybe air from outside, like the ocean, coming in and trapping the air in there. And these cities will experience what we call smog, photochemical smog, and nitrogen oxides. Um, when a lot of it is floating around, are floating around, uh, it will give the city to have a very brown, smoggy look. And this brown smog is basically called that brown smog. Okay? Now, evaporation also occurs, right? Because this, this whole system is very dynamic. It's very hard to explain. So, evaporation occurs condensing into clouds, and when it precipitates down as rain, when it precipitates down as rain, all these pollutants get converted into acid rain. Acid rain, you know, will destroy human buildings, will uh, not to mention all these pollutants cause respiratory problems and lung cancer diseases and all that stuff. But uh, acid rain will cause things to buildings, uh, cause things to rust. Uh, yeah, and when it comes down and hits into nature, uh, the pH level uh, of bodies of water such as lakes and or oceans decrease and we know that organisms have a very narrow band in which in the pH range that they will thrive and if you lower it beyond the range of the pH that the organisms can thrive they will all die off right so that's about it for this unit